the Mets had shaved the lead to 6-4 when Gibson set up an insurance run with a ninth inning steal. But a re-injured hamstring sent him to the clubhouse. With Jay Howell's suspension still in effect, Brian Holton came out of the bullpen to end the game when John Shelby's running catch cemented a 7-4 Dodger victory and sent the two teams winging west for game six with the Dodgers one win away from the World Series. In the third game of this series, Saturday afternoon in New York, you'll recall the temperature was 43 degrees. It was almost cold enough to snow. Now, Tuesday, twilight in Los Angeles. The temperature today in L.A. up into the high 80s. Right now, it's about 84 degrees. Dodger Stadium filling to capacity for game six of the National League Championship Series as the Mets take on the Dodgers, and the Dodgers try to win the pennant for the first time since 1981. I'm Al Michaels, and welcome to Game 6. And tonight, it's Tim Leary on the mound for the Dodgers, David Cohn for the Mets. And we start by telling you, Kirk Gibson injured yesterday, took a shot of cortisone yesterday, took batting practice tonight. He is in the lineup for the Dodgers in the number three spot in left field. Just about 48 hours ago, the New York Mets were three outs away from going up three games to one. And I'm not sure the Dodgers could have rebounded on Monday from that sort of deficit. Instead, Mike Sosha hit a home run, and that is the fulcrum in this series right now. Gibson won that game with a home run past midnight. Dodgers win yesterday. And now it's the Mets who come to town having to win two games to keep their season Alive. The New York Mets, of course, are trying to win the pennant for the first time in two years, and the Dodgers are trying to win it for the first time in seven seasons, and the World Series opens Saturday against the Oakland A's. What about the New York Mets now? Can they bounce back? Here's the state of the team from tonight's spokesman, Keith Hernandez. Well, I think we have to get off quick today. I think offensively we have to make every at-bat count early. We've been behind every game, having to come back, and it's just an uphill climb. It's been like an uphill struggle every every game. I think it's important for us to jump out quick tonight, get, have a big inning, uh, get up a five, four runs, and get a good pitching performance. And that, that might carry. That'll, that'll, I think, carry over to tomorrow. Then you got a great pitching matchup with uh, Darling and Hershiser. But tonight's pitching matchup, of course, in Game Six is Leary and Cohn, and this crowd. And this crowd has been basically characterized as very laid back through the years, is very pumped up right now for game six of the National League Championship Series. The National League Championship Series, brought to you by Acura Legend and Integra. Precision crafted performance exclusively at your Acura dealer. Dodger Stadium in the twilight from above as we prepare now for the sixth game of the National League Championship Series. As we mentioned at the top of the telecast, there was some question as to Kirk Gibson. Yesterday, he was forced to leave the game, re-injuring his hamstring. There he is live. We mentioned that he is in the starting lineup for the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight in the number three spot in the batting order and playing left field. And we thought this would be a most opportune time for you to learn a little bit more about Kirk Gibson of the Dodgers. I'm just a very intense person, and I think I approach things a little differently than some do. I call the game the beast. When things start going good, the beast will get you, and uh, it brings you down. So, I mean, that's part of what drives you. And uh, you know, I've suggested that we have something to throw stuff into next year because of the ricochets. and. It's probably something that I shouldn't do. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's an outlet, it's a frustration. 
Um, I don't like to fail. And obviously, when I'm doing that, I've failed. Sparky, I remember Sparky used to tell me, you know, there's no way you can make it through a season like this. You know, you're going to have to learn to, to uh, curtail yourself a little bit, which I did. And as has been said that I was like a wild stallion when I first came into the into the game, and now it's said that I'm at least a broken stallion. If you don't get on the field to win, I don't understand why you're there. I believe in shooting for, for the works, and that is to be world champs. I think I'm a good person. I think I work at it, being a good person and, and being a good player. And I think one of the biggest reasons that people don't understand a lot about me or don't know me is because that's my choice. I, I choose to have it that way. I think I know who my real true friends are. And when I step on that field, I, uh, it's not only for the competition, but it is my job. And uh, I am performing out there. I think I have a ballpark mentality and a family mentality, and uh, I will not take the game home with me. Um, that's what makes me happy. That, my family makes me happy. And uh, my wife, matter of fact, says that she, she comes to the game sometime just to see the other side of me because I'm much different than anybody would perceive me to be with my family because of what they see on the field. And as I said earlier, that's my choice. I don't really like people to know Kirk Gibson, what he, what he really is all about, um, but they can be assured of one thing, and that's that they're going to give every ounce of energy and determination and competitiveness, willingness to win that ball game when I'm on that field. Live, Kirk Gibson, and as you can imagine, a huge ovation as he was just introduced to this crowd at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. We'll be back with more from L.A. right after this. Howell is eligible to pitch tonight. Originally, President Bart Giamatti of the National League handed down a three-day suspension. It was subsequently reduced to two. So he is available to Tommy Lasorda tonight. Jay Howell is a very sensitive and a very intelligent man who is distressed at the perception that some people might have of this incident. And he talked about it earlier. Well, I, I, I first want to say that, that it's important that I get across that my intent was not to cheat in any way. That under the conditions, I was simply trying to get a grip on the ball. And I issued a statement in New York, and I explained the, the entire matter, and I wanted to put it behind me. But I, I, at the same time, I did want to come out and say that there was absolutely no intention to change in any way the flight of the ball or to put anything on the ball because that's not what the purpose of, of, of the pine tar was for. Jay, it seems to me as difficult as it has been for you t and your teammates to not have you available for two games. As important as that is the fact that I get the feeling you feel to a certain degree your reputation has been besmirched by this entire affair. Well, I, I, th I hope that people understand that the reason why that I was using pine tar, that's the, the substance, was simply to take the place of rosin. It's, it's a common occurrence in baseball. People do that, pitchers do that, to get a better grip on the ball. And in those conditions, uh, it's common knowledge that pitchers use it. Tell me what it was like for you to have to, as a spectator, view game four Sunday night on television. I don't think that I could describe what the feeling was to sit there and watch two guys, Tudor and Kirk Gibson, out there with my initials on their sleeves. And, and the feeling that I had uh, watching them come back and respond like that was just indescribable. It's incredible the support that I've gotten from my teammates, and I, I just don't have words to tell you how I felt about that. So once again, Jay Howell back in uniform tonight, available tonight, available obviously tomorrow if we go seven. Tommy Lasorda would love to have him have another night off tonight because he'd like to see Tim Leary go all the way. He'll face David Cohn, and we'll be back with game six after this from your local station.
Again, beautiful early evening in Los Angeles. Temperature in the 80s in a Dodger Stadium. Crowd still coming in for game six as the Dodgers try to win the pennant tonight and the New York Mets try to extend it one more day and set up a seventh game tomorrow night, which would come your way at 8 o'clock Eastern and at 5 o'clock Pacific. But right now, first things first, as we get set for game six, and again, if you're tuning in a little bit late, Kirk Gibson will play tonight, despite suffering a recurring injury to the left hamstring yesterday, sliding into second base in the ninth inning. And, and Tim McCarver, he has come to very much be the symbol and the embodiment of the Dodgers, and never more so than on a night like tonight. Well, Al, you've heard that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, as far as Kirk Gibson's language is concerned, if it ain't broke, play the game. And that's what he'll be doing tonight. Now, think about it. If you were a teammate of Kirk Gibson and you see a guy out there playing on one leg, kind of pump you up, wouldn't it? And what if you were a pitcher on the staff and Oral Hershiser threw 111 pitches on Saturday and then came back, worked in relief in the 12th inning on Sunday, and then Monday he was warming up and he'll be the starting pitcher if it goes to seven games. I agree with Keith Hernandez in that the Mets have to strike early tonight. They haven't done that during this series. Not at all. In fact, the no. Dodgers have had the lead in every game. Now, as far as the pitching matchup is concerned, Jim Palmer, two guys who haven't pitched a lot of innings of late, but for varying reasons. Well, that's true. David Cohn. Uh, and the irony, I think, really, if you look at David Cohn, is the fact the Mets probably wouldn't have been here in the playoffs without him. He pitched the second game, but before that, he wrote that infamous column. Or actually, he didn't write it. He talked to one of the writers. The writer wrote it, and he has been regretting it ever since. Uh, lost his poise, did not pitch well. 17 games over 500. Tim Leary, on the other hand, 17-game winner, lost 11. Uh, the big question in my mind, he pitched very poorly down the stretch. And I think most people feel that it's the 360 innings. He pitched 30 in spring training, 90 in winter ball, and two, over 200 this year. So I think he's tired, and he's had some mechanical problems, too. So here we go. Game six coming your way from Los Angeles. The Dodgers and the Mets in the National League Championship Series. The National League Championship Series, brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Schick, maker of the new Schick Slim Twin Disposable Razor, already preferred by men who have noses. And by Mastercare Car Service, with over 1,500 locations nationwide. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. And there is Steve Garvey, who got to throw out the first pitch, the longtime Dodger first baseman, who, of course, ended his career with the San Diego Padres, accorded the honor of throwing out the ceremonial first pitch to a former teammate, Mike Sosha. Mets lineup tonight. Len Dykstra starts things in center field. Wally Backman now is up in the two spot. A shift there for Dave Johnson. Hernandez hits third, and, of course, it's Strawberry fourth. And Kevin McReynolds struggling three for 20 in the series in the five spot. They move Greg Jeffries from number two to sixth in the order. Gary Carter does the catching. Howard Johnson is on the bench. And Kevin Elster is the shortstop tonight. And the pitcher is David Cohn, who lasted two innings in game two Wednesday. Tim Leary, a one-time Met, a Met draft choice in 1979. Now a Dodger trying to beat the Mets. The inside pitch on Tim from the Phillies, Mike Schmidt. There aren't a lot of secrets to Tim Leary. Tim comes right at the hitters with a hard, heavy, sinking fastball. Runs it in on righties, runs it away from lefties. He likes to get ahead of the hitters with that heavy fastball and put them away with the split-fingered fastball. This is the key pitch for Tim Leary. It's made him the great pitcher that he has been this year. The split-fingered fastball goes down, looks like a fastball, and dives into the dirt at the last second. Tim's a good fielder, holds runners on, goes to home play quick, tough to steal on. Tim Leary's probably the best right-handed hitting pitcher in the National League. So good, in fact, he came up as a pinch hitter in a big game with the Giants in August and won it with a pinch hit. Gibson, Shelby, and Marshall in the Dodger outfield. Hamilton, Griffin, Sachs, and Hatcher in the infield. Mike Sosha back of the plate. And here we go with Tim Leary on the mound. Before a crowd that was as raucous and animated as any I can ever remember in Los Angeles 
before the game. Certainly before the game, they were more raucous and animated than most I've heard during games. Well, that's what Tommy said when the, before the series start. We got to get our. We know they're going to come out. Let's get them involved, and they are involved. Len Dykstra to lead off, and the first pitch of the game is taken for a strike. So it's almost as if the Dodger fans, having sat back and watched the three games in Shea Stadium, pick up that audio level as their club returns home. I mean, Everybody's got to have a game plan, and the Mets' game plan is to try to keep the crowd out of this game. And if they score early, that may do it. Dykstra, who homered yesterday, takes a pitch away, and the count is one ball and one strike. Right now, the entire field is encased in shade. The sun is really no problem, but it's still a, a little bit difficult for the hitters because the lights have really not taken effect. Mike Smith that's what he said was so important as you just saw a nice sinking fastball is if you do get ahead now the hitter does not see the ball if you pitch quickly you have about three or four innings and so the really the lights will take effect it's a big advantage for a pitcher Dykstra right on top of the plate they try to pitch him inside and he thought that ball was a ball but clearly that was a strike that came back over the inside part of the plate a one two to Dykstra is lifted foul Dykstra and Wilson, and those of you who follow the Mets know this, and we've detailed it to some extent, have platooned for the better part of the last three years, though Dykstra was playing a lot in June and July and August, and then Wilson took over in September. They've been platooned in the series, but Mookie now has an injured thumb, and Dykstra in the lineup tonight. Not necessarily because of that particular reason, but it does make Davey Johnson's choice easier in that regard he's got a man with an injured thumb in Wilson and he's got a real fresh body in Dykstra well earlier in the year September 2nd uh, Leary threw four home runs two by Kevin Elster he's playing shortstops tonight one by Greg Jeffries he's at third and then uh, another one by Mookie Wilson but if you go back to yesterday three run home run and then a double down the line the line for Denny Lenny Dykstra so it's pretty good reason to have him in the lineup mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes. Game six, just underway in Los Angeles. Two and two, and there was the split finger. Yeah, and that's the, the problem he's had. Uh, we talked about the innings, and the reason he pitched so much is that last year he was three and 11. I mean, just imagine going from three and 11 as you take another look at the split finger. See the ball tumble? Well, that's slow motion. You can see what the hitter is looking at. The key to that pitch, of course, is the fast arm action. You think it's a fastball, you commit yourself early, and you swing a lot of balls in the dirt. More effective when he gets ahead. 2-2 two -two pitch is fouled away. The other night, Leary in relief in game four. And, of course, with the dramatics, with the home run by Gibson. And Hersheiser coming out of the bullpen for the save. It will be forever forgotten that Leary was called on in the 12th inning to try to save it, but couldn't. He gave up a couple of singles, then got Jeffries to fly out, and out he came. 2-2 is grounded foul by Bill Robinson. So Dykstra still at the plate here in the top of the first to be followed by Backman and Hernandez. And there is Keith. As we talked about earlier, he had some mechanical problems. He's a very mechanical pitcher. His left shoulder is the key. If he opens up too quickly, he does not throw the ball. Then we go back to the innings. 360 innings in one year. 90 in Tijuana. There's 9-0. 30 in spring training and 200-plus during the season. Fouled away again, so Dykstra making Leary work. And there is a, a most happy fellow right now who was looking on Sunday <laughs> night. <laughs> when you said that, you see what he did? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, we're sneaking up on him from that angle up above. <laughs> well, he's happy. Now, now, now he knows he's on, yeah, right? right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, Tommy's always looking for the camera is what it amounts to. <laughs> Dykstra hits it sharply, and that's off the glove of Hatcher, and he can't recover. Had Mickey been able to barehanded after it had popped out of his glove, he might have had a play with Leary covering it first, but then he juggled it again, and that was that. So Dykstra's on, and Hatcher gets an error. Looks like the ball hit too. Yeah, well, I agree. Ball hits him on the, the, actually the hand. I don't think he got a glove on it. The ball hit above the glove. Short hop. 
wicked one hopper could have been scored a base that I agree Jim of course what what makes it a harder too is that it's coming out of the crowd and the same thing that the hitter goes through or the infielder goes through coming right out of the white shirts now Wally Backman who has been hitting in the H spot and Davey Johnson shuffling his lineup tonight with Backman up in the two spot and Jeffrey's down in the sixth spot with Elster also in the lineup at shortstop also goes back to that graphic I think we saw two games ago which is that the Dodgers first baseman had more errors than any other first baseman group in the mm -hmm. National League something like 23 errors right Dykstra who had 30 steals is going in a perfect hit and run to left field and Dykstra is on his way to third so an auspicious beginning for the Mets as Dykstra reaches and then on the hit and run Backman slaps one to left for a base hit and the Mets are runners at first and third with nobody out and the meat of the order coming up in 1986 when you thought of the Mets in early innings you thought of Backman at first Dykstra at third the two table setters getting on and the Mets have failed to do that during this series but they are trying to take the first lead for the first time the Dodgers have scored first in every game thus far Keith Hernandez at 276 during the regular season Dodger infield double play depth Dykstra at third and Backman at first and with so much talk about Gibson's hamstring almost lost is the fact that Hernandez didn't play about a third of the season because of his hamstring pull and that limited his playing time severely this year but it's had no ill effect on him in the playoffs at least from our perception Backman held on by Hatcher. Mets with runners at first and third and nobody out of the top of the first inning. And of course, Leary is very conscious of Wally. Wally does not run like he used to. I mean, he's had some hamstring problems, but also when I talked to him, he used to steal 26, 31 bases. He said, I don't like to take away that hole for Hernandez. That's the hole between first and second. And then if he did makes it out, I certainly don't want to get thrown out with Daryl Strawberry at the plate. Hernandez checks his swing, comes around, and the count is 0-2. Again, a very selective hitter does not, in this situation, want to swing a ball that he doesn't want to hit. So he, he's very happy he does not hit this ball. He'd rather have it down. Tries to hold up and does it. An idea that Tim Leary has a good moving fastball right now. Well, we saw that with Dykstra, the way the ball right. was off the plate and run right back in. 0-2 pitch is inside, 1-2. and two. Now, Mike Sosha said he really has three kinds of fastballs. I don't want to get too complex, but a normal pitcher will hold the ball across the seams, which gives you a little bit of lift. You hold it with the seams, and it'll run away from a left-handed hitter into a right-hander. And then you can put a little more pressure on the four-seamer. You can see right there, it looks like he's with the, with the seams. Put a little more pressure in your middle finger, you can make the ball slide. It'll cut. So it gives you three fastball, really, to the same delivery. One, two pitch, just missing. Two and two. And 55,400 trying to umpire that call. Well, it looks like Wade Boggs type. The, the umpires know that Hernandez has a great eye. And the ball's outside. He doesn't even offer. Good idea of the strike zone. And that's Paul Runge calling the balls and strikes tonight. Two and two the count. First inning, no score. Dykstra at third, Backman at first. And the 2-2 pitch is hit foul off to the left. Runge is back of the plate and the rest of the alignment tonight. Harry Windelstadt is at first, and that means he'd be back of the plate in a seventh game. John McSherry at second, Joe West at third, Dutch Renner down the line in left, and Bob Davidson in right. The umpires have done an outstanding job. Indeed. A couple of arguments yep. put on bunts at, at the plate or something like that, but handled the situation very well. 
In fact, Paul Runge's dad, Ed Runge, umpired a lot of games. Big strike zone for the first two. Then you had to earn the third one. Two and two the count. Lasorda looking on as Leary tries to extricate himself from a first inning jam. Leary who played at UCLA. Delivers 2-2 two, two, outside ball three. Three and two. So now we'll see about Backman three and two with nobody out and what Davey Johnson wants to do. I would say Backman would be running almost certain contact hitter up there a pitcher that throws the ball down in the strike zone which means that the ground ball would be more prevalent off a guy like Leary than a guy say like Roger Clemens who throws that exploding high fastball so look for Backman to run he takes a conservative lead and still has to go back in with his hand he was only a couple of steps off the bag. 3-2 pitch with less than two outs or with two outs is the same as a hit and run. If you're the runner at first base, you've got to make sure the pitcher pitches. It's up to the hitter to put the ball in play. That's why you'll see a lot of pitchers throw over there more often, hoping to get, get a, a cheap out, so to speak, because he is in a jam. Three and two the count. Yeah, they're having trouble with the signals, and I'm not really sure with Leary struggling at this point in the season, he just throw that split finger fastball. He has not had that effective pitch the last month. Backman goes, swung on and missed. The throw to second is not in time. So Hernandez strikes out, but Backman steals second. And so she's going to contend that Hernandez interfered with the throw, and here comes Lasorda to plead the case as well. Remember, it doesn't have to be intentional. It can be unintentional in interference because the rule book does not specify that it's intentional. And Rungi is saying that in the course of Hernandez swinging, that it was a normal swing and his follow-through, even though it may have carried him through to the inside part of the plate to block the lane, that Sosha had to throw through, it was still a normal occurrence, and in his judgment, it wasn't interference. But I understand what Mike is talking about here. Watch the swing and the follow-through. See, the follow-through takes him into the lane. So Sosha has to throw the ball to the third base side, and Griffin can't make the quick tag. I understand exactly what Mike is talking about. Here it is again. But the point is, if he comes over the line out of the batter's box, whether he wanted to interfere or not, interfere or not, I would think that he had interfered. Well, did he get over uh, well, enough the over the plate mm -hmm. to interfere? I mean, it didn't appear that he had lunged across the plate. It looked like Paul Runge was pointing down at the uh -huh. at the ground to show Tommy Lasorda where he actually did stride. Sosha actually makes contact. See the pitch is inside. Now the, le the left foot of Hernandez is the one that makes contact with the right foot of Sosha. It when seemed like the pitch throw. had a more of an effect yeah. why he had a swing because yeah, it was in. The throw took him inside and that's what fooled Hernandez. So they get the strikeout but they don't get the interference call. And meanwhile runners at second and third. The infield plays back and Leary works on Strawberry high. And while we were showing you the replays Ron Peronoski went to the mound and no doubt discussing situation here you've got first base open and pitching to strawberry with a right hand batting McReynolds on deck inside ball two nearly hit him well I'll tell you one thing one of the cardinal rules is not to have big innings early and if you pitch around Daryl strawberry here whether it's intentional or unintentional and Kevin McReynolds who is not is having a bad series but is capable of getting a big hit and you put your team out this series is not three and two. It's almost three three. And if Cone is up to to stuff or snuff, excuse me, stuff and stuff, <laughs> they're in trouble. I mean, I'd rather throw a fly ball, give them a run, because they have been scoring runs this series. Well, can you can you do that here? I, I don't know whether I agree with you, Jim. I, I'm not in favor of pitching around the big hitter early in the game, but Strawberry's hot, and McReynolds is not. I think I throw him a pitch off the plate here. 2-0 to him is off the plate inside. Ball three. three yeah, that's why yeah, you caught and I. That's why you caught and I pissed because we don't always agree on that. No, that's fine. I think they'd walk in now. They've tried to throw the ball in off the plate. They've been unsuccessful doing it. You might as well put him on. That's what you're trying to do anyway. Three and zero the count. 
with McReynolds waiting on deck. And so they pitch around him. They walk him on four. An unintentional, intentional walk. The bases are loaded. The infield can set at double play depth. And the only man in the National League who had two grand slams this season, Kevin McReynolds, comes to the plate. In this series, he is three for 20. And that's 150. Of course, you were there. Uh, they, they pitched around Strawberry, and he had a grand slam. Off Doug Drabeck of the Pirates in the sixth inning. One for 10 with runners on base in this series, and that was the base hit yesterday that hit Greg Jeffries. He's also one for 15 against right-handed pitching in the series, so he is really struggling against right-handers. Bases loaded, one out, no score, top of the first inning. And so the Mets have a golden chance to do exactly what Keith Hernandez said they needed to do at the beginning of the telecast. Get off to a quick start with a couple of runs, and that will have a double effect here. It will take the crowd out of the game, at least for the moment, because if Leary gets out of this jam, the crowd will very much be in the game. And it's hit high in the air to right field, deep enough to score a run. Marshall comes to the line and makes the catch. Dykstra on his way home, and he scores on a sacrifice fly. The other runners hold. So McReynolds with a fly ball to Marshall. And for the first time in this series, the Mets break out on top. 1-0 New York with two out now. Runners at first and second, and Greg Jeffries coming up. I'll tell you, I think that's bad base running by Wally Backman. Backman went three quarters of the way, and Marshall's throw is home. I mean, he can tag mm -hmm. up and walk to third. And the reason that's important is because Strawberry, who stole a bunch of bases this year, 29 to be exact, that clears second base for him. So instead of first and second, the Mets could have second and third. Greg Jeffries. And of course, even if he doesn't steal, you have the first baseman holding the runner on. Yeah. Big advantage. Right, with Jeffries hitting. The switch hitting third baseman takes a strike in the count of one one. But on the subject of base running blunders, that was such a big play yesterday. Jeffries hit by that soft roller to the left side with the Mets trailing by two in the eighth. A lot of people felt that going into here that maybe his one weakness might be defense. He's played extremely well. He's made two base running errors, one in game two and then one yesterday. One and one to count. two strikes the one thing uh, as you're viewing this game whenever you see Mike Socia sit inside to a left-handed hitter it is it's not going to be a split finger fastball the only time because split fingers are not designed to come inside the left-handers the only time that Leary will throw the split finger fastball is when Socia's sitting away and this might be it right here good time for it well that's been the pattern they try to get him out with breaking balls but he's hit some curveballs. I mean, he seems like he is such a gifted young hitter that if you just throw a curveball up there, he waits real well. His body may come forward, but his hands stay back, which is a sign of a good hitter. Split finger has been the, the, really his toughest pitch to hit. One and two. Sosha sets up inside. Fastball missing in the count, two and two. So Sosha then, see, he leaned to the left, and then he came inside. And obviously, it was a fastball. You'll never see the split finger target be inside to a left-handed hitter. Obviously, that ball was over the plate, but it was close. Get the reaction of Jeffries running away from the pitch. Must have been high. Now he sets up away, and the 2-2 is a fastball away, and it's 3-2. And, and the runners will be going. Wow. Well, this is why this guy was minor league player of the year two years in a row. Look at, I mean, these, this, look at the ball run away. And yet he just starts the swing and holds up. Awfully close pitches. Mm -hmm. Awfully close. So three and two, Leary ready to throw his 30th pitch of the inning. Backman taking off from second and Strawberry away from first. And the 3-2 pitch is swift foul. So he'll throw at least the 31st. 
But again, the Dodgers have Jay Howell at the end of the line in the bullpen tonight, and now that order becomes relevant very, very quickly. And in fact, the Dodger bullpen goes right into action here in the first inning with Ricky Horton, the left-hander, beginning to throw. And yesterday, short man Brian Holton is also up and throwing in his more familiar role as a long man. Three and two the count. Runners go. High ball four. So they're loaded up, and it will bring up Gary Carter. And Sosha goes to the mound, and Paranoski now cannot go to the round mound. Remember, he, he used up his visit in this inning when they went out to talk strategy in regard to Strawberry with first base open. So if anybody goes to the mound, Leary has to come out of the game. Holton is the righty, Horton is the lefty. You know, this doesn't seem like a first inning. It seems like a continuation of yesterday's game. <laughs> This whole series yeah. seems like a continuation yeah. of the previous it, it, it game. It really does. Yesterday's game, every inning, the first game too, seemed like a continuation uh -huh. of Sunday night's game. Uh -huh. Well, well yesterday's game truly was a continuation of Sunday <laughs> night's right. game starting at noon. Well, that's why it's so important if the Dodgers want to maintain that momentum not to have a big inning here. Carter, breaking ball over for a strike. You know, the amazing stat that Steve Hurt came up with is that if in the 59 series that have gone to six games, the team trailing three to two has come back to win 34 of those times. So it's it's and I feel you. Why, why, why does that happen? Maybe the the team that's ahead doesn't try to win. Not that they don't try to win. They don't pull out all the horses. Those but, are all postseason series playoffs and World Series. Gardner fly ball a shallow right field and down the line and Hatcher dies but can't make the catch. Mickey going all out and he is shaken up. I think. I do too. I think he hit his shoulder and head first, and that with the uh, dirt on his shoulder, he did exactly that. Some feel that Mickey Hatcher, along with Kirk Gibson, of course, the embodiment of the Dodger spirit, uh, has just taken this town by storm. And you'll see that his shoulder hits first and then the head. Oh boy. When I said I think there are times Hatcher being a character. If it were the regular season and he'd made a great effort, once in a while he'll go down like that, get up with a big smile on his face, but no time for frivolity in the sixth game of the playoffs. You know, it's great for intensity, and you see the intensity here. I mean, this is an all-out effort. He knows how important this third out is in the first inning. But also, he does so many things well. I mean, he, we saw the hit and run. I mean, perfectly executed. The double off Cone, really to get Cone out of the second ball game. Jim, he really looks dazed right yeah. now. Well, you know, that's, that's like quarterback. I mean, we've seen what happened in the NFL. We may not have seen it, but we heard about it. A lot of quarterbacks, and then you get knocked on the turf. You hit your head, you get a concussion. No balls, two strikes. And Carter goes down on strikes. So a tough first inning for Leary, but he gets out giving up just one run. What's our song of the night, Tim? Red Sails in the Sunset. <laughs> and others to come. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim Leary goes to work as dusk approaches in the third inning, and he's already worked pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets with the ace and the queen. And they have done that to Keith Hernandez for the last month and a half because he has been the biggest contributor in the hearts game. Mm -hmm. And if you played hearts, the queen is 13 and all the hearts are one point. So that's why they stick that queen of hearts next to, or the queen of spades next to Hernandez's name. And furthermore, you can deal me that hand in blackjack anytime you want. Yes, sir. Strawberry takes a strike as we start the third inning. Strawberry, McReynolds, and Jeffries. There's some pretty illustrious names. The first eight guys that have a better home run ratio. I think Killebrew, Mays, Ruth, Ralph Kiner, Kiner Fox, Jimmy Fox, Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt has done a terrific job mm -hmm. in the inside pitch, and you would expect that out of Michael Jack. Mm -hmm. 542 home runs, lifetime. And you have to wonder what his fate is yeah, next year. Exactly. 
that's one of those stories that kind of gets lost in postseason. Everybody concentrates on the playoffs and the upcoming World Series. But one of the stories to be thought about, mulled over during the winter. And certainly Mike will be the, the first guy mulling it over. 2-1 to Strawberry is high ball three. Three and one. Strawberry walked in the first inning. The 3-1 pitch is Leary's 55th of the night and hits hit foul into the second level. Three and two. And what makes that number so important is it's a lot of pitches in the first place, but we talked about the bullpen. You have Hershiser going tomorrow. He doesn't throw between starts. <laughs> He's throwing every day between starts the last couple days. So, as you said, Timmy, in the opening, 111 pitches. Comes back in relief through yesterday. You can't assume he's going to be the pitcher he's been in September. You'd like to have him be that if you're a Dodger fan. You just don't know, so. Strawberry hits it in the center field for a base hit. So Darrell with his ninth hit in the series, the most by any member of the two clubs. The Mets, again with the leadoff man aboard. They've gotten the leadoff man on in all three innings tonight, and up comes Kevin McReynolds. Talk about that curl of Daryl Strawberry. You see that bat pointed over the helmet? Now that means he's got a long way to come. So he's got to be quicker than the normal hitter. He doesn't hold the bat straight up and down or flat. He curls it. So he's got, a, got further to come or farther to come. And he came far enough. Just that far swing. enough, yes. Right. Well, that's the dilemma of having a guy like Strawberry lead off. He could steal bases, 29 steals on the year. Can hit home runs 39. He doesn't didn't hit for a high average this year. I think mainly because Hernandez was out and it seemed like he got distracted. He do so many things, and then when you go three and two, you got to throw him a strike. One one. And of course, when you're struggling, it's the, probably the most difficult thing for a pitcher to do is convince himself that he has to throw the ball over the plate. Tim Belcher talked about how he was never successful, had all these wildness problems in the minors until he realized they had good enough stuff to win in the major leagues. He reaches out and it's off the glove of Griffin and a big break there for the Mets. As Strawberry goes to second base, look for the moment when Griffin went up as if he'd come down with the ball. I'll tell you, it looked like his windage was too much toward third, third base. base. It looked like the ball hit him on the side of the glove. The heel of the hand. A split finger fastball. It's going to be a base hit. But we'll take a look and see exactly where Griffin missed that ball. It appeared to bounce off the heel of the glove, which means that he either jumped too soon or jumped too far toward third base. See, that ball hits him on the heel of the glove. Very strange. I think he thought possibly that it was hit harder than it was. Consequently, mm -hmm. jumped too high. That ball hit off the end of the bat. But a break for the Mets. So an infield single. Singles by Strawberry and McReynolds. Runners at first and second. Nobody on. Jeffries, the batter, takes outside. And for the moment, nothing doing in the Dodger bullpen. They've been up in the first and in the second. And we talked about the difference in managing tonight. Tommy Lasorda. Having two men throw early on in both the first and the second. And one batter away, I'm sure, from more action there if Jeffries were to get on. One and one. In fact, it might be less than a batter. Sun going down, and the Dodgers trying to send the sun down on the Mets, but they trail one nothing in the third inning. That was hittable and he missed it. You saw Jeffries nodding that, bumping that head up and down. You'll see that often when hitters get their pitch and they miss it and foul it back. Well, the velocity and the move. Watch this ball run. Runs away. We said Jeffries with a home run in early September, right two days after he was called up. But if you watch the, and he hit six home runs, four right handed, two left handed, if you watch the uh, replays, 
I mean, he can go out and get the ball out over the plate with great bat speed and, and pull it. Stays alive, one and two. Leary started his career with the Mets. Racked by injury early on, then went to the Brewers. Pitched well on occasion there. But then he was traded to the Dodgers in the Greg Brock deal, and Jim detailed what he did in winter ball and developing the split finger. And this year, a 17-game winner. When George Bamberger was the pitching coach and manager of the New York Mets, he loved Tim Leary, and when he became the manager of the Brewers for the second time, he got Leary in a trade. Two and two. In fact, the Brewers at one point wanted to, to try to get him back. Well, yeah, after Tijuana, he commuted from <laughs> Santa Monica, went nine and zero down there. He pitched every fourth or fifth day, and uh, they said the border guards kind of looked at him funny when he because they don't have shower shower facilities. He just put his uniform on in Santa Monica, drive down to Tia, Tijuana, and, and pitch. <laughs> That'll get you stopped at the border. <laughs> 2-2 pitch is lifted to right field, deep but very playable. Strawberry tags at second. McReynolds is also tagging. Marshall makes the catch, and the throw is cut off as Strawberry advances. So Darrell goes to third. McReynolds remains at first. And with one out now, it'll bring up Gary Carter, who had a golden opportunity in the first inning, coming up with the bases loaded and two out, but struck out. Two for ten lifetime, and of course, if Leary makes the pitch or pitches like the one he did to strike him out, I could see why. Good fastball right on the outside corner. Kind of an unusual year, as you see, Holton on the left and the right-hander, and Ricky Horton on the right. Carter seven home runs in his first 17 games. Hit another one about a couple of weeks later. Then went 225 at bats without a home run, trying to get number 300. He had seven home runs by April 26th and ended up with 11. He's tried to make some adjustments. He's standing closer to the plate, but it, it looks to me that he's still, you know, he's still pulling out. He can't keep that left shoulder in. And, and so you see the slightly open stance, and what he tries to do is like what Brian Downing of the Angels did. First move will be back towards the pitcher. McReynolds goes, and it's a fly ball to shallow center field. Strawberry is tagging, but Shelby is there to make the catch, and Darrell has no chance. A little pop fly, not nearly deep enough with McReynolds going. So he retreats to first, and now Elster comes up, and Carter has left five men on in his first two at-bats. Well, it's a good theory by Davey Johnson. What he's trying to do is get Gary Carter just to concentrate on making contact. A hit-and-run play, you don't often see it to a power hitter, but Gary Carter a different hitter now. McReynolds running, he takes a look, and that's what you want to do if you're on first base. Take three steps and look for the ball. He found it. You can't trust the second baseman and shortstop to give you the accounting of where the ball is. Frustration continues for Carter. The Mets have already left five men on tonight, and now with two out and two on, Elster comes to the plate. Elster, earlier this season, two homers in a game off Leary. And the count is 1-0. And, oh. and here, in a situation with a base open, even though it's not first, there's no reason to throw Elster anything even half decent with a pitcher on deck. Well, he threw him two split-finger fastballs. I talked to him before the game, and he said they were just, you know, I didn't have a good one. Reminds me of Jack Morris, when early in the year Jack was struggling, and he said they're just kind of spitting at my split-finger. They don't even, they kind of ignore it. And basically, the problem with Larry's having a night, he's not, doesn't have great control with his fastball. And he's behind 2-0. Oh. Interesting situation you mentioned with the base open, even though it's not open at second base. Psychologically, managers don't like to intentionally walk a base runner into scoring position. Mm -hmm. If he's there, there'd be no question that they would walk Elster here. But from a psychological standpoint, it probably, you know, makes a little sense. You don't like to intentionally walk a base runner in the scoring position. That's what you'd be doing if you walked him intentionally here. And he lines one to the gap in left center. Shelby races over, can't make the play. Strawberry 
Murray scores. McReynolds will be held as Griffin cuts the throw off on a double by Elster. So 2-0 and oh to the number eight hitter. And Tim just talking about the fact you really don't want to walk him in that particular situation because you're putting the extra man in scoring position. But Leary down the middle on a 2-0 pitch, and the Mets take advantage and lead it by a score of 2-0. And the Mets are probably glad that the hit and run pitcher. didn't work. If McReynolds, say Carter hits a, an anemic ground ball back to the pitcher. Well, Leary's plays to first base. You got second and third, and most certainly you walk Elster. But not in this situation. Mm -hmm. So the hit and run backfiring, and Elster, they're forced to pitch to him, and he delivers. Well, two things backfire, too, because you don't get the number eight hitter. If you get Elster, you're out of the inning. Now, even if you get Cohn, at least the Mets are to the top of the order in the fourth. So a big hit, 2 nothing. Cohn is the batter with runners at second and third, and he fouls it back, and the count is 0-1. And again, Cohn, during the regular season, hit 150. He was 12 for 80. Lasorda looking on as Leary faces his 18th man in three innings. The Mets have already been through the order twice. And it's squid right into the glove of Hamilton. So Leary continues to struggle at the end of two and a half. It's 2-0 Mets. Fifth inning at Dodger Stadium in game six. Mets leading 2 0. Strawberry, McReynolds, and Jeffries with Tim Leary on the mound. And Darrell standing in, having walked and singled. And he has nine hits in 24 at bats. 375 during the playoffs. Fifth inning. Tim Leary has struggled through four. But at least the Dodgers are very much in the game. It's 2 0 Mets. Just to button up that Jay Howell thing, Jim, I talked to him extensively before the game, and as I said, he was very concerned about the perception. He was very concerned that people would think that he went out there to cheat when, in effect, he went out there and did what a lot of other guys do all the time. Well, that's true, and, and I, when I said on the air that I, I never did it, I wasn't trying to take a holier-than-thou situation, but I played with some great pitchers that didn't either, and apparently it's become very prevalent. I think they have to really consider maybe uh, a rule change. Mm -hmm. He did break the rules. I, 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 and he uh, admits it. Yes, oh, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like speeding. When you tell the officer, well, everybody else was speeding, why am I going to get the ticket? And uh, they don't have a lot of compassion. I, I, I think that here's a guy that had a great year, and maybe people do have a different perception of him when they shouldn't. Well, the other night you called it jaywalking. That was the, the best analogy. <laughs> Strawberry draws the walk. And you can bet the bullpen will get up again as Tim Leary starts the fifth inning with a walk. And Lasorda is going to take a little walk himself as McReynolds comes up. I think it's interesting to note from the Howell and Cohn situation that after it happened, the Mets fans were forgiving of Howell. And after Cohn apologized, judging from the reaction tonight, mm -hmm. the Dodger fans are forgiving of Cohn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's very unusual. Yep. Well, they were both very honest, too. I mean, talk about stand-up guys. Yep. Cohn said, I said it. I said it facetiously. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was going to be written that way. Heat of an emotion, emotional ball game. But still, in, a, in the playoffs, you don't find, uh, you know, the masses as forgiving, I think, as the two towns have been. Mm -hmm. McReynolds doesn't find that pitch forgiving as he drills it to deep left center field and gone. inevitable because Leary's been on a tightrope in each inning and he begins the fifth by walking Strawberry and McReynolds hits a two-run homer to make it four nothing. McReynolds looking inside. If you remember the last time up, Leary jammed him with the fastball inside. The Dodgers have been pitching McReynolds inside and this time he goes up and looks for one pitch in one area and again, this is after four balls to Strawberry. Again, trying to establish a strike and, and really reestablish your, your confidence, as you can see, Tommy, not very happy. 
It's a similar situation after Gooden walked Shelby the other night. First pitch, Sosha, boom, out of here. Tonight, four balls to Strawberry. McReynolds, boom, out of here. And it, and it goes back to, to a pitcher being too cautious and too aware of the strike zone after he walks a hitter. So it's not necessarily the walk, it's what happens after. And Paranowski goes to the mound, and boom, it's Leary out of here. 4 nothing in the fifth inning in game six. Just about everybody talks about how you have to pitch inside, but not after a base on ball to Strawberry. McReynolds, no doubt looking fastball, gets it, opens up, scores four to nothing. Well, that's a danger of pitching inside. All good hitters, you have to jam them. But the problem with that is that if you miss inside, it's a long ball. If you miss away, it's a single. Leary winds up throwing 87 pitches in four plus innings, gives up four runs, six hits. And Brian Holton comes into work here in the fifth Brian. inning. He'll face Jeffries. Jeffries with nobody on, and then Carter on deck. Mets trying to square the series and send us to a seventh game tomorrow. Hershiser and Darling would be the matchup at 8 o'clock Eastern. Brian Holton. On in relief, induces a grounder to Hatcher and Jeffrey's guy. One down. Holton, <laughs> the other night, Tim, was, was talking about being Hatcher. so nervous Hatcher. coming Hatcher. into the game, he started singing a little song to himself in the bullpen. It was amazing. He said if he was so nervous in order to relax, he started singing the song, you take the high road, I'll take the low road. And he started singing it quite melodically as he was warming up. And while he was walking in, he's telling his mother this in a phone call the next day. Carter popping it up, and Sosha is there, and one catcher will retire the other easily. Two down. While he was walking in, he was thinking of his father, Holton, that is. His father's name is John, lives in Houston, and thinking, thinking of his dad. And he told his mother that she asked him if he was nervous during that relief appearance. He said, no, as a matter of fact, I was singing, you take the high road and I'll take the low road. And he said, you know, I've never heard that song. And she <laughs> said, yes, you have. Your father sang it to you when you were a child. So unknowingly, the words come out from the subconscious and the song flows. That is a weird oh, story, yeah. but that's a story Brian related to me before the ball game yeah, yeah. tonight. That, that's, that's a cover story for psychology today, it I gotta tell you. Is. It really is. <laughs> Telling his mother he didn't know the words to the song, he doesn't even remember hearing the song. And she said, yes, you did. Your dad sang it, sang it to you as an infant. Well, he took, he took the high road yesterday when he picked up the shave. And now he's back in his more conventional role of long and middle relief. Holton has been up and throwing, remember, in every inning. First, second, third, fourth, and now finally in the game in the fifth. And one and one with two out on Elster. Fastball for a strike. Yeah, he could probably pitch well doing that because he's a control pitcher. As we told you yesterday, if you were listening, I mean, he's got a little bit of a changeup. Fastball doesn't seem to be overpowering, but with a big, slow curveball he throws, and he throws it so consistently for strikes, it looks a lot faster than it is. And he'll probably hit the spot. There, there's the curveball. You couldn't really see it from and that, that angle. That's the low road he was talking <laughs> yes. about, that low curveball. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Tommy, knowing he has a game in hand, but that's not a very comforting thought right now. Well, he also knows he's got an injured left fielder, and they struggled for runs the entire month of September and early in October. Lowest batting average in, in the major leagues for September, 205. Breaking ball is hit to left field, deep but playable, backing up his Gibson, and he makes the catch. In the inning, two runs, one hit to McReynolds Homer after four and a half. That's four. Dodgers, nothing.